Welcome to the Faces Unfiltered podcast. I am Alex Davila and I am a full-time photographer. I am a single mama and I am an entrepreneur enthusiast. In this podcast, we talk about the messy, the good, the triumphs, the trials. We talk about it all. And I want you to walk away from every single episode feeling like you can take on the world, you can accomplish your dreams, and you have strategies and tips and tricks that are going to help you get there. Not only that, but you're going to hear stories that are going to help inspire and strengthen you on your journey as many stories have helped strengthen me. So let's get into it. Welcome to the very first podcast episode of Faces Unfiltered. I am so excited to finally be sitting down and doing this first episode because my journey of getting to this point is one that I feel so many people can relate to. It's taken me a really long time to feel confident enough to sit down and do this even though I've been in the industry for however long, how long is that? 2018. And I've been a single mom for quite some time. And I think it's really important to feel related to when you have these big dreams, you have these big aspirations, and yet sometimes we can't seem to get our feet off the ground. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey and the struggles that I've had along the way, how I've overcome many of those and how I am actively overcoming a lot of them. Unlike a lot of photographers, I did not know that photography was even in my realm of interests for so long. Back in college, I think I purchased, I don't even know what the brand was, but I purchased a camera that had some kit lenses. I don't even know what they were. I think it was an Olympus camera and I loved that thing. I will see if I can find some pictures to show you, but I bought that camera and I started playing around with it a whole bunch and it was pretty fun. Oh my gosh, I'm having flashbacks to when I was engaged at like 18 years old and our engagements, we had balloons. (laughs) The college days, guys, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh, don't get engaged at 18. I'm just saying it's probably not the best idea. But okay, anyway, back to the camera situation. I had this camera and I just, I don't have a strong memory of just obsessing over this camera or feeling super creative with it or anything. I just thought it was fun to be able to take pictures of people. And eventually I sold it and I never picked up a camera until like gosh 20 it would have been 2016 so this is like several years later maybe like six or seven years later and I had my first son and I convinced my husband at the time or he's now my ex-husband great guy but convinced him to invest (laughs) in a Canon 70D because I loved making YouTube videos. I wanted to do makeup reviews. I've always loved the makeup beauty realm. And so anyway, I convinced him somehow to buy a Canon 70D. So we bought this camera and I would stay up late all the time recording YouTube videos. And it was just so fun. Freckled Beauty was my, um, was my handle on YouTube. But I remember just loving the fact that I had this camera and I had the nifty 50 with it. So 51.8 and both of these are crop sensors. So it was really tight zoomed in, which I was totally fine with, but it was pushed all the way back up against a wall in this tiny little apartment for college. It was, it was fun. It was fun days. But one Sunday, I think, we decided, it was fall time in 2017, and we decided to go out and take some pictures of our son. So I looked on YouTube how to kind of navigate the settings on this camera, and I had already nerded out a ton on video settings. I wanted to understand video, be the expert there to making YouTube videos. So I understood kind of the triad of shutter speed, ISO, f-stop. Now I just had to implement it into pictures. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and we went out and took some pictures and I was like, okay, these pictures are actually really freaking cute. So I'll see if I can find some of those as well because I still obsess over those pictures and they are the first pictures that I ever truly took with the intention of getting good pictures, if that makes sense. So... 
after that, I posted those. And then I had people who were like, hey, do you want to take our picture? And I was like, yeah, heck yeah. So I went on YouTube and I started learning everything I could about photography. And when I tell you I dove in, I dove in hard. I went to the point of screenshotting, like I would screenshot someone's stories and I would zoom in to try and see if I could see what their camera was, what lens they were using, presets, the whole thing. I dove in hard and I was pregnant at the time and I just, I had never felt, except for with makeup, I had never felt such an obsession and an excitement for something. It was, it was just exciting. And if you have started an entrepreneurial journey based on a passion that you have, you know that feeling where you cannot get enough. So that was really exciting. So I started taking people's pictures. I want to do separate episodes on how I started my business, mistakes I made in the beginning, all of that stuff. But it was just really exciting. And I rode that wave for quite some time. And then I decided to make a business out of it. I was pregnant and I was about to have my second boy, my little boy, my Tatum. I love him. He's so cute. And I started my business officially in August of 2018. I had him in June and I shot my very first wedding in August of 2018. And I will never forget Brittany and Herrick and that just being my first wedding ever that I shot by myself. And it was just so exciting. I loved it. I was so passionate about it. We're going to fast forward just a little bit. Things start getting a little rocky at home. And one year later, I'm in a rollover car accident with my two boys. At this point, I have lots of clients. I have retreats that I'm going to. I'm just, I'm booked. And my shoulders, both of them dislocate and I go in for surgery. Again, things on the marriage side are rocky and I, I didn't know how to like fully navigate hiring associate shooters, all that stuff, because my business was almost growing faster than I was able to keep up with at that time because concussion surgeries the whole everything vision therapy physical therapy was just taking over my life um very next year we end up filing for divorce by the end of 2020 how many people got divorced during covid i'm just curious i'm just wondering if we all just spent way too much time together thankfully again like i said my ex-husband is great we are good friends and i'm so grateful for him but sometimes it kills me i'm like we all got divorced in 2020. Um, so then as I was going to get divorced, my business was still doing really well, but it became a need. So before I got divorced, I needed to now do this work to be able to provide for my family. And then getting divorced, I knew that I was going to, again, continue to do it. So not a lot changed, but Rather than it being a passion, it became an obligation. It became something that had to be done. And I had a choice, right? I could go and work a nine to five. My kids could go to daycare. Sorry, I had to check to make sure everything was still recording. My kids could go to daycare, but I always dreamt of being a stay-at-home mom. If there is anything I love more, there is nothing I love more than being a mother and having babies. I love being pregnant. I I know some of you are going to hate me for that because some of you do not have great pregnancies or you know people who don't. I personally really loved being pregnant and I love the newborn stage. There's so much. I just have always loved and wanted to be a mother and I have that entrepreneur spirit so I don't think that would have changed but being a mother was always my primary goal. So for me, I felt like God prepared a way for me to still be a stay-at-home mom while having a business that was going to provide for us. And for almost the first year, actually, yeah, for about a year, I was majority with my kids. I'd say about 80%, 80 to 90% had my kids and... I had to provide for them. There was no child support, no alimony, no anything like that. 
And when those shifts happen, when your passion now becomes an obligation at the time, I didn't have the perspective of God perfectly set this up for me. (laughs) My perspective was this freaking sucks. My family is broken apart. I hate this. This is what I have to do. I didn't hate my clients and hate my passion, but it just, the dynamic shifted. And I realized that I could either just push and propel myself forward or I could sink into a bit of a depression. So I'm going to tell you about the two times that I did each and what that looked like for my business. So after I got divorced, I was angry. I had a lot of anger and that's just the reality of it. And because I had this anger and this frustration, a little bit of bitterness, I pushed myself really hard. I think that anger fueled me and pushed me and that was my most successful year in my business so far. It was extremely successful. I was traveling a lot. I kept booking destination weddings. I was bringing friends to these destination weddings. Like it was, it was amazing. Um, was I stressed at home? Absolutely. Things were really stressful and my kids, I didn't feel like they had enough attention. I didn't have enough time in the day. I was getting four to five hours of sleep a night, if that, and I was just working so hard. I think because I was so angry. So my business was successful, very successful. I was also very angry. So then once the forgiveness came in and things settled, then what was my motivation? I was also in an extremely unhealthy relationship at that point. So, you know, the next year I'm in an unhealthy relationship. There's this trauma bonding happening and it simply wasn't helping me in any way. I don't think it was serving either of us. And that took so much out of me because when I love, I love so hard. I know that I had family that were just like, Alex, get it together. Like, what are you doing? Get out of there. But for me, I was just, I was so committed. And that was, that was my goal was like, help this person take care of my kids whatever it was like those relationships were the most important thing to me above anything else and so I started to get so anxious in that realm and I saw my business start taking a little bit of a hit and a little bit more of a hit because things in my personal life weren't going great but I wasn't angry. I was just anxious. I was, and I had never really experienced anxiety before. So I was super, super anxious. And I didn't know that I had anxiety. I didn't know what was going on. I just thought that I was being a really good girlfriend, <laughs> really good mom, I was not serving anyone. And I watched just the decline in inquiries. It was like as my energy shifted, so did my business. Like my business success was so intertwined with me and how I was feeling because while I had a really successful year the year prior, it was not nearly as successful as it could have been or my goals if there was a lot of positivity and fuel and drive and determination and discipline that did not stem from anger. So as I started to see my business decline in all of that, I started to actually become very depressed. Depressed because my business wasn't what I wanted and didn't have the family I wanted. My relationship was always on and off and filled with anxiety. I was filled with anxiety. I was losing my hair because I was so just anxious all the time. I didn't know what was going to happen. It was pins and needles. And That was just such an unhealthy state to be. And I learned during that time, hindsight, right? Because that once that relationship ended, my creativity through the roof, through the roof. I gained the most amount of community members in that time. I felt the lightest that I had felt in a long time after that relationship ended. 
And then I had another traumatic, heartbreaking event happen within a couple months of that breakup. And that was with a really close friend. Now, I had never experienced anything like that. Never somebody who was not like a lover, somebody who was just a close sister figure. And the heartbreak that I felt, I get that for some people it's like, oh, that's so dramatic. Let it go. If you've never felt a best friend betray you, it is the nastiest (laughs) feeling ever. It is, it is heartbreaking. That's the only way I can describe it is it is truly, truly heartbreaking, worse than any breakup. Sounds so silly. We weren't even close at the time and yet it just, it just killed me. Um, I only bring that up. I I hate even thinking (laughs) that this could be shared because, you know, but it's part of life. It's part of my story. It is what it is. And when that happened, that was about a year ago, it sent my nervous system into the deepest shock that I have ever felt. And I just went hard on my business again. I was like, I'm not going to be angry. I'm going to let it go. Like it is, I, it is what it is. I let them go. Like the people involved, just let them go. That wasn't the issue, but it was what had happened and the identity crisis I felt like I had because I was like, wait, I was a good person to these people. Why, why would this happen? X, Y, Z, the whole thing that go through this all trickled into my business. And I hate saying that because I never want to give people this fuel of like, yeah, we got to her, whatever. And I would hate to think that people would think that way. I would hope they wouldn't. Um, even though they knew their actions had hurt me, I would hope that there wasn't this praying for my downfall, but it felt like there was because their eyes were on, on me and I did not want to post. I didn't want to share anything. I didn't want them to have any access, any access to my clients. I cherish my clients so much. I cherish my family, my friends, all of that so much. You see how it started to affect my business. You see how now my personal life and my business were so intertwined that one affected the other and it took these really intense events over the last few years to get me to where I am today where I think I finally get it (laughs) I think I finally understand how to healthily find the balance between your personal life and the things that are going on and your business Because I am an open book in a lot of ways. I am somebody who wants to share the good and the bad and all the in-between because I want people to see that they can succeed despite those. I have so many failures. I will share so many of them with you. I have made mistakes along the way, but I've also had incredible triumphs, incredible successes, incredible light bulb moments that have taught me how to succeed despite the trials around me. And that is what I hope to continue to share with you because I know that I'm not the only person who struggles. I'm not the only person who has felt heartbreak or families falling apart and divorce and all this stuff. I'm not the only one. But I know if I was down in the dumps and I was stuck in unhealthy cycles and it affected my business, I know that there are more people just like that. And sometimes, sometimes I may not be the, the expert, but if I help you feel like there's one less, like you're one less lonely person and that you have someone in your corner cheering you on, then that makes me happy. I... I'm not sure how it took so long for me to see the light and to have more clarity and understanding, but regardless of how long it's taken me, I would hope that what I have to share would make it so it doesn't take you as long. I hope that the words I share are me speaking to my past self and helping pull her out of that quicker. Um, so I have learned a lot. I have made those mistakes. And now I'm at a place where implementing all the things I was trying so hard to implement, but I was still 
stuck in a cycle of anxiety and everything. Now that I'm not stuck in a cycle of anxiety, now that all of that is released and gone, now those habits and those rituals, like having a healthy morning routine, a healthy evening routine, eating healthy, exercising, all the things that I do personally to take care of myself, now they actually work. Now they actually have an effect on my life because I have removed what was not serving me, what was not helping me, but was actually hurting me. And I have so many thoughts on self-care, on forgiveness, on the hard, the ugly, (laughs) the mistakes, and everything that is good that can come from it. So my journey has been wild. I don't know if I shared enough of what I should have shared, For the first episode, this might be a little rocky. It might be a little deep, honestly. I don't know. Who knows? We we don't know. We don't we're gonna we're gonna see how it all plays out. But ultimately, I'm glad that you're here. You're gonna be learning with me as I do this podcast. You're gonna see, oh, she said maybe she shouldn't have said that. I don't know. Maybe she made some mistakes along the way. I'm still gonna make mistakes and I will share them with you so that you can learn from me and hopefully not make the same mistakes. But I am somebody who will own up to my stuff. I will own up to what I did wrong so that I can learn from it and so I can grow. And hopefully that helps you as well. So I hope that you stick around. I hope that this episode gave you a little bit of background on where I'm coming from and the things that I hope to share with you and a little bit about my journey and who I am. And I really hope that you choose to stick around because you have so much value and so much worth and I hope I can help you find that potential. I hope that you know how truly incredible you are, how magnificent your purpose is and that you can realize that purpose and make your dreams absolutely come true and you will see and hear many experiences not just from me but other people on the podcast who will hopefully inspire and strengthen you so that you feel less alone you maybe get some juicy stories and you feel like you got this because you really do so please stick around subscribe to the podcast and we will see you in next week's first real dive deep episode